who am I? And if, if you've seen Callum at all this week, he will have told you, yes, I am the EP content genius. And again, it's been mentioned. Mike Chewers is how I say my name. I, I believe my grandfather would say Mike Chuyesh. Um, it's Slovenian in origin, and I answer to almost anything. So it's, it's OK if you call me Kuyes or Kujas or usually I just get Chewy, which works pretty fine for me. There's too many mics in the world anyway. So this is what I'm hopefully going to cover. I'm a little bit of a loose cannon, so we'll see where we end up. But who I am, how and why did I start using Education Perfect? What was, what was it that drew me into the product? Why I'm passionate about it, and hopefully that will come through as I'm talking to you. I'm really passionate about this. Uh, what sets it apart from the other resources that I've used, and why it's the platform for you in your classroom, and why I think I'm going to be able to use it to take online technology in the classroom beyond what we ever have before. So that's what we're hopefully going to get to today, and you'll probably have some questions afterwards, and I'll be happy to take any of those as we go. So. All right, what drives me as a teacher? I grew up with a father who was a headmaster. My grandfather started the first uh, Slovenian language school in Sydney. I've been involved in education my whole life. I had a brief attempt to try and escape it when I finished school and started off in medicine, um, but it wasn't for me. What was for me was teaching and education. Um, I'm really passionate about helping people learn and finding effective ways to do that. And one of the things that I think we really need to try and take advantage of is how best to use technology in the classroom. Now, that's just a sample of some of the programs I've used in the last three years. And each of those programs was good enough for me to see value in it and use for at least a period of time. But they also had drawbacks along the way. Now, many of you will recognise a lot of the things there. Some of them were great at gamification. Some of them were good at um, giving the kids a quick little test. But none of them really satisfied me. I mean, I was so passionate, I'm, I'm not mechanically minded at all, but I was putting together old computers, trying to install Ed Ubuntu, which I believe is a Linux um, operating system specifically for schools and education. I, I managed to get two computers built and working before I realised that the amount of time it was taking for me to get it right was probably a bit disproportionate to the amount of value I was getting out of those computers. But I've, I've, it's been a journey to try and find what is the solution? How can I improve what I do for the kids? And that's really what we're all about, I think everyone in the room. So how did I discover Education Perfect? What is that noise and how do you know so much French? I'm a father. Last year, my son started at St Peter's with me in grade eight. That was his first year of high school. We've now caught up to the rest of the world and we're starting in grade seven, so, or well, the rest of Australia. Um, but I didn't like to push him. It was his first year of high school. He's a good kid, Sam. He's a, he's a good boy. But um, I was sitting there at my desk doing my work and I just kept hearing something in French and then zing, and there's something in French, zing. And, <laughs> I'm passionate about education. What are you doing over there? And, and how do you know that French? It, within one term, the amount of French that Sam had learnt would, would have surpassed what I did in my first two years of German at, at high school. I mean, it was ridiculous. And not only could he understand what was being said, he could, he could type the words in correctly with the correct accents. All these things that, you know, as a student, I'd be trying to do with, like, little index cards and trying to get it right or finding my textbook and realising I'd left it at home, in my, left it at school in the locker or left it at home when I was at school. I never had it in the right place. I was a typical you know, high school boy. He, not only was he learning French, but he loved it. He absolutely loved the program. So I sent him to bed, of course, because I wanted to have a look around. I said, don't log out. I'm going to have a little play. What are you doing on there? <laughs> and, and what I discovered was it wasn't just a French program. There, there were other subjects on there. There was this, it wasn't language perfect, there was education perfect. And I hadn't heard of any of them before I sat down at that computer. But the next day I was drafting an email to Education Perfect saying, hey, I've just had a look at this product. It looks pretty good. I'd be really interested in finding out a bit more. Coincidentally, two weeks later, the World Series launch 2014 was in Brisbane. 
I mean, that, that, that's how Providence provided in this case. It was just perfect timing, absolutely. So I went along to this very conference, and you can see it's less than a year ago, you know, 28th of April 2014. So less than a year ago, I'd had no experience with the program other than hearing my son once or twice. And now I'm up here talking about it because what I've discovered about this program is its brilliance. And I want to share that with as many people as I can. And I've been doing that. I've, I've hauled my friends in and told them about it. Whenever they ask me, what are you doing at school? I say, oh, there's this new thing, Education Perfect. I got my mum and dad to sign up because I was so passionate about it telling them. They thought, that's brilliant. I've got to have a go. So mum's relearning her old French on it. So it's really... But, but what was it about it? So I discovered it at the, at the World Series. But what were the things that stood out? What made me think this might be the one thing to solve that problem of the 30-odd... Um, different sites that I had been using. And the first one and the really powerful one that I saw was this spaced repetition. You, you've got there Ebbinghaus's forgetting curve. Most of you in education would have seen that at one time or another. I, I, as well as doing mathematics, I had a particular passion for, I did some psychology as well, and I was really interested, obviously, in the learning side of things. What is it that helps people learn? Because for some people, learning comes pretty easily. And I was fortunate enough to be one of those people. I could, I could learn stuff, I could remember stuff. But if, if there was something that was difficult for me, what did I do? I went to this spaced repetition. I used to go to trivia competitions and you know, you'd always be asked capitals of countries or something. So I wrote out the list, handwritten of course, on, of all the countries and all the capitals. And one of them I'd have just the countries, the other one I'd have just the capitals. And I would print off copies of those and I'd practice them when I was on the train going to school or something like that, so that I would actually learn how to do it. Well, this, this saves the trouble for all of that. This had space repetition. You, it didn't just say, I've learnt it once, I don't need to do that anymore. Because we've all experienced that. Kids will get it one day, the next day it's gone, it's out the window. So that, that was really powerful. And, not a, and that's just the first thing that I really loved about the product. What else have we got? All right, content creation. Yes, I was the content genius, I believe that's the term. Yeah, oh. <laughs> but it, it, I, I didn't set out to be the content genius. Uh, towards the end, I was pretty keen, but, um, but <laughs> I, I won't lie. But that wasn't what I set out to do. What I wanted to do was make content that was meaningful for my students. There are lots of good products out there. They're invariably static. You, you get the product, it's packaged up, and it's handed to you. That's what you've got to work with. And that was never quite enough. It never really satisfied. I've got kids doing international baccalaureate higher level maths that I want to be able to give stuff, give questions to that's way beyond what you're going to get from any program that's aimed at high school. I've also got uh, grade eight and nine kids in, who are in learning support classes where I'm working with those students. And I've got to be able to customise content so that it's not too hard for them, so that they're not continually being told, nah, wrong, nah, wrong again. But there's no incentive for those students to use the product. Here was something that I could learn how to create content. And at the very conference last year, I sat down with Callum. I missed a lot of the talks, which I'm sure were fantastic. But I got great insight into how the program worked, how to create content. And from the next day, I started creating questions for my students. And that was really powerful that I was able to do that. I didn't have to send lists away. I didn't have to ask for the company to do it and then never hear back from them. Or three months later, when I'd moved on to topics, they said, oh, we've done that for you now. That, that wasn't happening. It was, it was really powerful. So that's two of the things. Meaningful feedback. Great work solutions. Yeah, Callum's approving of his own work there. That's beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> M meaningful feedback. When students get something wrong, they're not just told it's wrong. They're told why it's wrong. They're shown how to do the question. And then they've got a little button they can just retry to go back and do it again. So they can get that instant feedback, which is going to be very powerful for them. They've got the correction where they can see what they should have done. And John had a great, I can see John there, John had a great idea yesterday, John Ming, and he said, well, maybe we can build in that they don't get that feedback straight away. Maybe they've got the option there where, can I try it again, or before I see the feedback. And as soon as an idea, you'll, you'll notice this, as soon as an idea is, is mentioned in the education perfect space, someone's onto it. And my good mate Shane back there has done that a number of times. He's a brilliant, <laughs> he's, he's a brilliant guy. I think everyone, give Shane a round of applause. He's up. <laughs> 
I, I have been amazed spending a week here in the office at how quickly things happen in Education Perfect. I mean, you're not waiting months, you're waiting hours sometimes and things have changed dramatically and improved to the point where you're going, wow, this is a new product again. And th this, is, this is just fantastic. And I know everyone else in the room is probably, or well, many of you will have experienced that as well. So, so meaningful feedback, another fantastic feature. Next, it's great to have a great program and there are some really good programs out there, but they don't engage the kids at all. They're not interested in using it. I've got some fantastic maths that I've prepared for kids and they're not interested in using it because it's not fun, it's not interactive, there's no reward for them. The gamification aspects, whether it's just the little dot saying you're ready to learn the list again, whether it's the scoreboard where they're competing with their mates, you can see Joel B there, about third on the list. Joel hadn't done any work for me in class for about two months until I made a little competition there. He, he, he was very hard to get motivated. Give him a competition with a little reward at the end, suddenly he's doing work that I would never have got out of him before. He's not the only one, but that's just one of the many things. You can see there the little graphs that we're talking about, the big steep bit coming up, that's the World Championships, that's where the World Series, and that's a really important thing in terms of getting the whole school motivated um, about education. So I think it was mentioned yesterday by Liz that we, we now have an inter-house academic cup. Previously, all of our inter-house activities were sport activities and that was all. And that was all the competition was about. Now we've got an academic cup where students can say, hey, I can do that. Anyone can do that. All I've got to do is get online and learn something. And we've got kids excited about learning in another way. So this gamification aspect, I was sold on that. And more importantly, the students are sold on that. They love it. Next one. Sorry. No, no, you're doing beautifully. Finally, why education perfect? Service and support. Of those other programs I've used, I've emailed many of them, you do hear back sometimes. I think if, if you can send an email at 2 a.m. in the morning because I'm not sleeping and I've got an idea and so I'm working away at something and I send something off and then the lovely Cathy emails me from London saying, thanks Mike, that's great, I'll make sure the guys see it in the morning. That, that's amazing. That there is always someone online to answer your call, to help you, to have a Skype chat. If you don't know how to make some content or you're having trouble because your fractions are ending up dividing by zero and you're not sure what you've done wrong, there's someone online to say, let's have a look at it. Book a time, let's make a time, let's, let's make something happen. And that, that's unrivaled in the education industry. Everyone else has packaged up their product, they've given it to you and mostly, in my experience, definitely walked away. This is a totally different feel. So that, that, they're the five things why I think I was sold on Education Perfect. And I've used the term fell in love there with Education Perfect, and it, and it pretty much has been. I, I did fall in love with the product. I found that it was everything that I wanted. It had all the, the space repetition, content creation, meaningful feedback, gamification, service and support. And that was all there one year ago. So one year ago, I had the product of my dreams. And what we're going to see is, if we move on, we're going to see that at the end of 2014, I was thinking, could I use this to replace my textbooks? With all those features that I knew of from last year, could I replace a textbook? And at the time, I probably thought I can't because the content lists were great and I could build my own, but I didn't have enough time to organise it all exactly the way I needed it, to put the content that I needed to add on there in the right place. And if you've seen what my content inbox used to look like, I was very disorganised and it needed a lot of help. But, but what I had was something that would almost work. And now, today, I'm no longer asking, could I replace my textbook with it? I'm, I'm asking, I, I now know why I should replace my textbook with it. I've actually written a couple of textbooks. They were not big sellers, but I was pretty happy with what they did. And they were for a specific market. They were for the Maths A course in Queensland. And, and I did a good job. But before they were even printed and published, I was already starting to be disappointed with aspects of it. Because what's wrong with your textbook? It's static, isn't it? Your textbook's not changing. Once you've got it out there, that's it. It's done. You can't give it an update. You can, you can maybe do a re-release, but really that's the same textbook with a couple of numbers changed. And as soon as you put that one out, it's static again and it's not improving. It's, textbooks, they, they grate with me because they're against my philosophy of this constant improvement. 
We should be trying to improve what we do every day. I don't use PowerPoints usually, I never use them in class. One, because I get bored and I distract the kids. And two, because if I just use the same PowerPoint every year, well, have I really thought about what I'm doing? Have I improved on what I'm doing? Now, I know lots of people are great at using their PowerPoints and updating them, that's not me. I think what you've got to do is you've got to present as relevant and up-to-date material as you can. You've got to make it relevant for your audience. And with Education Perfect, I've got the ability to do that. So what are the things that have convinced me that I now, for the next term, I'm not going to use a textbook with my Year 10s. I'm going to use Education Perfect. How am I going to do that? Before we move on, you've got to have a break from my voice. Watch this and we'll continue. Nobody's starting. Okay, here's your homework. Here's your homework. Um, first let me tell you the directions, um, what, form, take away, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Take away. What's six, take away, one? One. No, you take away, so you take away one out of six, how much does it equal? What's five, 10 minus one? I don't know. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six, seven, eight, nine. 10. Nope. Take away one. How much is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Nope. One, two, two three, four, five, six, six seven, seven, eight. And one, eight. And one more. And add one more. How many is it equal? One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One. It equals, it makes nine. See how you take away? You take away one. And it equals one. Mm -hmm. Do you get it now? Yes. All right. So I love that video. I laugh every time I see it, even now. Um, as a maths teacher, you feel like that a lot. But it's, it's that last little bit at the end, which I really want to talk about there, where it, the teacher and the student mutually agree to deceive each other and deceive themselves and say that they understand the problem. Do you get it now? Uh-huh. That, that, that's what happens, and that's what I did for probably the first 15, I'm probably still doing it today. When I set homework, I'm setting homework that students are going home to do, and they're gonna look at it and not know what to do. They'll have got it in class, three hours later they've had a football practice, they've done something, they're going there, they're opening up their textbook, and they're not really sure what to do. And so they, you know, when they get to class the next day, they say, how'd you go with your homework? Anyone got any questions? No, nah, all good. I'm good, no problems. I mean, I'm sure all of us at one time or another have been given work to do that we didn't know how to do. Wouldn't it be great if we didn't have to do our homework like that? If I didn't have to set work that I knew the top 10 kids are gonna finish that in five minutes. The, the rest of the group might be able to struggle through and get most of it, and I might get a question from those. But there's also the, the 10, 15 kids who are really struggling with maths. They might open their book to try it if they're really resilient and they haven't been worn down by the years of not being able to do their homework. But for the majority of them, that's it. They're not even going to open their books anymore. Now, that's pretty sad. What a waste of their time and my time. And I, I think that's a really unfair thing to do to students. So. With Education Perfect, I'm now going to be able to make homework meaningful for students. Now, how am I going to do that? Well, you'll see with the new lesson structure, the, the new lessons, this is a totally new product from the one I fell in love with. The new lesson structure is brilliant, and I'm sure you all would have seen that at some stage yesterday, and you'll see it again today. There's now, I can set for homework, go ahead and read the information slide on this topic. What I'm also doing is I can put in my own information slide. I can embed my own video of me talking to the kids, explaining to them what's coming up, how I want them to do it. And some of you saw an example of that yesterday in the maths one. But it, it's a simple process to do. 
and it took me five minutes to make a video, upload it onto Education Perfect. So now, when my students go home, I'm, and I tell them, I want you to do 20 minutes of homework for maths. You know, 20 minutes for an average grade eight or nine class, that's a good amount of homework for their maths. I want you to do 20 minutes of maths, but it's not what I think should take them 20 minutes in terms of problems to do. It's 20 minutes of read the introduction slide, watch my little video, try some of the preliminary questions and see how far you get. The really good kids, they're gonna, they're gonna fly through that lesson. And when they come to class the next day, I'm gonna have some extension work there for them, which they're gonna be able to get their teeth into and really enjoy. The kids who are struggling, they're all gonna be able to do their homework. They're not gonna be able to go home and go, oh, I couldn't do it, I just didn't know where to start, I left my textbook at home. No, any kid can go home, read an information slide, watch my little video and start the questions. If they have trouble with the questions, if they get it wrong, what do they get? They get that immediate feedback that shows them where they went wrong, how they could have done the question, and then they get to click a button that says retry. So now homework is meaningful for students. But not only is homework meaningful for students, my class time is mine again. The, the lesson plans in maths where if I had a 40 minute lesson, I might talk for 25 minutes, 30 minutes, and then, righto, let's just start a few problems before the bell goes. And some kids start, some kids think, it's only eight minutes, nearly lunchtime, I'm pretty hungry, let's just open my book and pretend. <laughs> that, that's not happening anymore. Because I've got, I've got lessons there, which the kids are working through. I can see reports updating live every five seconds, showing me who's not on task. So when I'm helping Sally over here, Johnny in the corner isn't getting up to mischief, because I'll be able to look and say, You've fallen behind everyone, you've been on that slide for 10 minutes and it's an information slide that takes two minute video. What's going on? So I'm gonna be able to get much more value out of my class time now. And the students are gonna get better value out of me as a resource. They're gonna be able to interact with me, talk to me, find out what's happening, get help with where they really need a more detailed explanation. It's a, it's a game changer for me in terms of what I can do in my classroom and how I'm gonna be able to improve the learning of my kids, which is the whole aim. So, the new features that have convinced me, I've mentioned some of them already, the amazing reporting that's updating live, so you can see exactly where the kids are having problems, not just what they got wrong, what mistake they made. I can give them feedback and send it to them and they get an email in their inbox saying, oh, when you did your homework last night, I saw you had trouble with this, this is what you could have done. Or I can say, that's a good job, but you just need to tidy it up a little bit. You can give them that feedback now, that's amazing. That, the ability to do that, and I think that's only, you know, that's only been implemented very recently, and that's going to continue to improve, because what happens with Education Perfect is they're not satisfied. They're not satisfied with being a good product. They're not satisfied with delivering most of what they aim for. You heard Craig yesterday say, I want to under-promise and over-deliver, and in the 12 months that I've been involved, that's happened routinely. Every day, every month, there's something new that's, wow, that's better than I thought it could be. And this is the sort of product that I think is going to change the way I do things. And it already has. Exam generation, I hadn't even mentioned that yet. The fact that I can now generate exams for my students. As well, in Australia, I've got to do what we call ex uh, alternative assessments. They've got to do assignments and that sort of thing. The biggest problem with setting a maths assignment is that students, out of the 300 students in a year level, 20 to 25 of them will go away and do it themselves. They really will. I reckon the next 200 are either asking one of their classmates who they know can do the question or getting their tutor at home or their parent at home to help them and do the questions for them. And that's a real problem. I don't think it's a very valid form of assessment. It's a form of assessment we're required to use. But I have a real problem with that. With Education Perfect this year, I'll be setting assessments where First of all, the students have to just work through some content lists. They've got to practice skills and show that they can develop the math skills I need them to do. But then exactly as Walter was talking to us yesterday, my students are going to be uploading questions and explanations of how they would do that question. That's, that's the sort of higher order thinking skills that we can get through Education Perfect. And it makes it easy for me to mark. It's a lot easier for me to mark it on there than it is to have 300 different kids all giving a presentation during their lunch hour. So, you know, that's, that's four weeks of lunch hours that I'm giving up to hear different presentations. Now I can mark them in my own time at home. 
I'm pretty sure that if I twist Shane's arm, peer marking will be something that will be able to be included there. You know, I'm, I'm, getting a, I'm getting a little smile. There's no rush on that, Shane. It's all right. It's all right. But, but, but these are just the potential of the product is limitless. And, and that's what's really exciting about this product. Um, yeah, so that's the extended sponsors. But, but really, how, how am I confident that what I'm going to do is, is going to work? Yeah, that's all of us. That's all of us in the room yesterday, I'm pretty sure. How am I confident that I can replace textbooks and that this is the product for me? Well, it's not just the Education Perfect team, who I think really are amazing, and I'm sure everyone's experienced that this week, but it's also the other teachers involved, the energy that I've got from meeting with other teachers here today um, and yesterday. It, it's really been fantastic. And what I, what I think has made the difference is this is a company that's as passionate about improving education as the teachers in the room are. We're all on the same page. It's very different to anything else I've experienced. So that, that's where I'm at.